Hello viewers, thank you for watching Gibbs TV. Please, if you have not subscribed to Gibbs TV, please kindly do so in order to grow the channel. Today's video is about organization of the study, specifically how to write organization session of a thesis, a dissertation or a research project. Now let's look at what organization of the study is about. What is organization of the study? Organization of the study in dissertation or a thesis or research project refers to how you structure your paper to present your findings and conclusions. That is, this session helps readers to know what to expect in the entire study. It could be for the proposal stage or the main writing. And is this to, in any of these two documents, we must see organization of the study. For proposal, you should tell readers how you intend to organize the entire study. Then after, or maybe writing the main paper, you should also tell readers how the study is organized. It is very important. But in either way, the language will change, okay? In terms of proposal, the language for the organization of the study will be in future tenses. But in the ongoing project or the existing study that you are doing, an ongoing project, um, it should be in present tense, okay? Very important. Broadly, a component of the organization of the study is to provide a map, a serve as a roadmap, that may guide readers through the reading and understanding of the dissertation or the research project. If it's a thesis, then it's going to guide the entire thesis. What about organization of the study? Know that a common way to organize any study is to introduce the study. That is why many of the academic writings, you must always give introduction. And in dissertation and thesis, the first chapter is always devoted to the introduction, okay? So first you must introduce the study. You must also tell readers the purpose or the aim of the study. And you must also summarize the entire method techniques, okay, the sources of the data and how you were able to retrieve all your literature. Then you must also summarize your findings, provide conclusion, and tell readers about the significance of your finding through the policy implications. Some scholars also argue that you should be able to identify okay, the research gap all right, through the organization of the study. And you must also set objective, describe the methodology, the results, and also provide key findings and recommendations. So let's kindly look at a component of organization of the study. In organization of the study, you will provide readers with a roadmap to your dissertation or your thesis or the study that illustrate what they should expect or serve as a roadmap, okay? That readers should know the, uh, the various compositions of the study. So it illustrates what they should expect. A, in how the study was organized and conducted. B, in how the chapters ahead have been sequenced or organized. So we must see the organization of the entire study, okay, in your paper. And that session must tell readers how the study was organized and conducted and how the various chapters ahead have been sequenced. So in that session, you must you must list all the various chapters, the, the you know, all the various chapters that made up of, of, of the entire dissertation or the thesis. You must see that then in the organization of the study. Generally, a component of the organization of the study is to spotlight the organizational signposts, okay, to look for in the chapters that follow. Specifically, a component of the organization of the study is to briefly establish how each chapter is constructed to achieve your research objective. So it's very important to take note of the general component and the specific component. So with the general, it serves as a signpost, okay? And with the specific, it establishes how each chapter is constructed to achieve your research objective. Take note of those two concepts. In a more specific fashion, we have 
two different examples for the components of the organization of the study. You know, some institutions, students will be allowed to develop six chapters. In others two, students are allowed to develop five chapters. So if your institution permits you to develop, let's say a six chapter dissertation model, then this particular um, equation highlighted in green is for you. But if your institution allows you to develop five, then the equation highlighted in yellow is for you. In the first equation, organization of the study is equals to chapter one plus chapter two plus chapter three plus chapter four plus chapter five plus chapter six. And if you are developing five chapter model, then organization of the study will be equal to the five chapters. That's chapter one plus chapter two plus chapter three plus chapter four plus chapter five. All right. This is a typical example for six chapter dissertation or thesis model. The one that is highlighted in the green. And it reads, and this one is written in a way that students will understand an ongoing project. However, if you are doing uh, you are about doing a proposal, then the, the tenses will change from the present to future tenses. So let me begin with this particular example, then I will change the tenses to future tenses to reflect the proposal style. All right. So in this particular example, you see in every paper or, or thesis or dissertation, you have a session for organization of the study. If it is a book, if it is a book, it will be organization of the book. Okay. So because it's a research project or thesis, or you always use study. So it is titled Organization of the Study. What goes into it? In all, the study is made up of six chapters, period. Chapter one is devoted to the discussion of the introduction of the entire study, period. Chapter two presents the discussion of the theoretical framework or the conceptual framework. Chapter three discusses review of relevant or related literature. Chapter four outlines the research methodology, while chapter five presents the analysis, results, and discussion for the study. Lastly, chapter six provides conclusions, summary of the research process and policy implication. This is a six chapter dissertation or thesis model. Okay. Even if if it is for a proposal, the tenses will change to future tenses. So for example, you have, you have a session tied to organization of the study. So for the case of a proposal, it will read like this. In all, the study will be made up of six chapters. Chapter one will be devoted to the discussion of the introduction of the entire study. The chapter two will present the discussion for the theoretical framework or the conceptual framework. Chapter three will discuss, will discuss review of related or relevant literature. Chapter four will outline the research methodology. Chapter five will present the analysis, results, and discussion for the study. Lastly, chapter six will provide conclusion summary of the research process and the policy implication. This is for the proposal style. Let's look at the five chapter dissertation or thesis model. As, as I stated earlier, always you have a title or heading, okay, or a team, caption, organization of the study, whether in a thesis or dissertation or your research project, okay? So with an ongoing dissertation or thesis writing, it will read, in all the study is made up of five chapters. Chapter one is devoted to the session, to the discussion of the introduction of the entire study. Chapter two presents the discussion for the theoretical framework, conceptual framework, and or provides a discussion for the review of related or relevant literature. You know, because it's a five chapter model, I combined the theoretical framework and the literature review to, to, to become one session or one chapter, okay? Then chapter three, or uh, chapter three outlines the research methodology. Chapter four presents the analysis results and discussion for the study. 
And lastly, chapter five provides conclusion summary of the research process and policy implications. So for the case of a proposal, the tenses will be cha will change to future tenses by introducing war into the writer. So in all, the study will be made up of five chapters. Chapter one will be devoted to the discussion of the introduction of the entire study. Chapter two will present the discussion for the theoretical framework and also will provide a discussion for review of related or relevant literature. While chapter three will outline the research methodology, chapter four will present the analysis results and discussion for the study. Then lastly, the chapter five will provide, this, will provide discussion for conclusion, summary of the research process and policy implication. This is, will be the writer for uh, five chapter dissertation proposal or thesis proposal. It will be in future tenses. So in conclusion, in order to adequately structure your organization of the study, for either your proposal or a thesis writing, it is important to answer these two major questions. How will you organize your study to systematically address your research question? And how will your chapters be sequenced and constructed to reflect the organization of your study? Thank you very much for subscribing to GIFS TV. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.